Welcome to the Bristol Heart Institute. My name's Tom Johnson, I'm an interventional cardiologist and here in Bristol we undertake a whole array of uh, complex intervention undertaking approximately 1600 uh, procedures a year and 75 to 80 percent of that activity is undertaken via the radial artery. So today we're looking at performing patent hemostasis uh, withdrawal of the radial sheath using the Terumo TR band and I'll just take you through the steps that we undertake here at the Bristol Heart Institute. So uh, in the first instance, we would tend to remove the sheath at the end of the procedure within the cath lab environment. And so the first thing to do in order to transport the patient to the uh, recovery or day case area would be to withdraw uh, the sheath, place the TR band, and then we worry about true patent hemostasis once we've returned uh, to the day case area. So in just withdrawing the sheath, so this might be a little bit sore as it just comes out, we just withdraw uh, the radial sheath slightly before applying the TR band. As you may already be familiar, the TR band uh, has two balloons which will inflate and place pressure over the radial artery. And very usefully, there is a green marker that we use to sight it on the surface of the wrist with a plan to place that just maybe a millimetre or two above uh, the skin puncture site. So here we place the band. This is a large band in this instance due to the gentleman's uh, wrist size. Place the Velcro strap posteriorly and then just check that we have adequate space within the ulnar area to ensure that we have continued uh, circulation via the, via the ulnar artery. And then as standard, we tend to inflate the cuff to 15 mils. Uh, the cuff can take between 13 and 18 mils, but we tend to just inflate to 15 as a routine. So here you'll just feel the, the cuff inflate on the wrist. You'll note that there's a, a white gauze under here, just so that actually we man maintain cleanliness under the, uh, the TR band. And here we'll just very gradually, with just uh, minor traction, withdraw the sheath. This might just, you might just feel some discomfort there. If there's any pressure there, then we would want to um, stop and consider other measures. But here this is coming out very freely. We see there that we haven't quite achieved hemostasis, so we'll just inflate the cuff. We have another three mils that we can inflate this cuff by. So at this point we're at the maximum inflation size of 18 mils and actually we've achieved hemostasis. You all right there? Yeah. Well done. No problem. So at this point then we would transfer the patient back to the day case area. And once we arrive in the day case area then we'll, what we want to be achieving is true patent hemostasis. So the, the idea of this being that we have both circulation from the ulna but then obviously that we then reopened the radial to try and minimise the chance of acute occlusion. So in doing so now, what we want to do is we want to be sure that we have adequate circulation to the hand. So we attach an oxygen saturation probe to the finger. And here we have a mobile saturation probe, which is very useful in this scenario. And we see very usefully here that we have a pulsatile uh, waveform here just with this equaliser type um, uh, graphic, achieving a saturation of 95. Now when we occlude the ulna, we assume that in also occluding the radial that we'll lose this waveform. So now I'm just gonna press on your wrist. And so they're just pressing actually quite firmly on the ulna. It would appear at this stage that we still have a waveform there and so we have to presume that in occluding the ulnar artery that we have actually maintained uh, a patency of the radial artery in order to gain a saturation uh, in the finger. We're not going to be able to test that any further because we can't really inflate this balloon any, any higher. But I'm very confident here that we have no evidence of bleeding at the skin site. And then also that in occluding the ulnar artery, as I've demonstrated, we still have a patency through evidence of the saturation at the fingertip. So at this point we've achieved hemostasis. And that, if you feel any resistance then you mustn't continue pulling. This is coming out very easily. 
And there we can confirm that we have uh, complete hemostasis, so there's no bleeding uh, under the TR band at the present time. Now what we intend to do now is to withdraw um, the air until we see flow in the cuff. And here we're just starting to see pulsatile flow, so that's having withdrawn seven mils and tend to then increase by a couple of mils until again we've obtained hemostasis. So this would be the normal procedure that we would undertake within the cath lab environment for tr transferring the patient back to our day case area, where then we'll undertake formal patent hemostasis assessment using an ox oxygenation or oxygen saturation probe uh, to ensure that we have an arterial waveform. Okay, so in order to uh, achieve patent hemostasis, we need to be using an oxygen saturation probe, and we have either a mobile device available or the use of a probe uh, um, as part of a blood pressure console. This is a, a nice way of doing it, so we'll place the saturation probe on the patient's finger. Now, this doesn't have a waveform, but it does have a sort of equalizer type uh, display that allows us to see the pulsatile uh, nature. So actually we can see here in this gentleman having inflated to 11 mils of air within the TR band that we have no evidence of bleeding at the site of the TR but we still have a nice pulsatile flow here which is obviously through uh, the ulna circulation most likely. If we now occlude the ulna artery so just um, pressing here, then we see that we have a loss of flow, telling us that we still have occlusion of the right radial artery. So now what we'll want to do is to withdraw some air uh, from the radial artery uh, with a view to then seeing where uh, we achieve uh, flow back through the radial artery. So here we have occlusion of the ulna, and I can then just gradually withdraw air, so that automatically withdraws until we start to see, and there we're starting to see again, a waveform. So we've only actually withdrawn about a mil of air there, two mils in total. And still with occlusion of the ulna, we can see that we're getting a waveform and a saturation measurement through the radial artery circulation. So we've now withdrawn actually down to nine mils of air. And then importantly, we have to just see that we have continued uh, uh, occlusion at the skin surface and no evidence of blood loss and so we actually have a very nice clean site at this this point so here we have achieved patent hemostasis <laughs>